I've done thousands of adductor canal blocks and felt pretty good with my results until I realized I was doing them wrong. Turns out there's more to it than I thought. It's an incredibly valuable block for knee patients and it's pretty easy to do, but there are some specific things to consider to maximize your block's effect. And in this video, I'm gonna share my essential tips that I've learned the hard way for how to get optimal results from your adductor canal blocks. The main purpose of the adductor canal block is to provide relief from knee pain by blocking some branches of the femoral nerve that innervate the knee joint. We use this mostly for knee replacements, but it's also used extensively for ACL repair, proximal tibial surgery, and in combination with a sciatic block when you want to get the saphenous nerve for ankle surgery. There are two muscles we need to pay attention to in the mid-thigh, the adductor longus and the sartorius. The saphenous nerve runs with the femoral artery and vein deep to sartorius and runs over adductor longus. We can see these three neurovascular structures sandwiched here. To image this area, we're going to place a linear probe on the anterior medial thigh, right about halfway between the inguinal crease and the patella. It helps to have the patient's thigh frog-legged a bit to expose the medial side, and our needle is going to be advanced from the lateral aspect. The first sono landmark we're going to see is the circular femoral artery. There's a vein there too, but it's often squished flat by the pressure of the probe. The sartorius muscle lies superficial to the vessels, the adductor longus deep, and the vastus medialis muscle is on the lateral side. The hyperechoic structure we see immediately lateral to the artery is the saphenous nerve. Now, when this block was first described, the purpose was to achieve a motor sparing version of the femoral nerve block by blocking some of the articular fibers of the femoral while avoiding the motor fibers so the patients could walk right away after surgery. And that part turned out to be true. A subsartorial saphenous nerve block does not cause quads weakness. Now, I grew up blocking femoral nerves for knee replacement, and the part I couldn't figure out was how a saphenous nerve block alone was supposed to provide knee pain relief. Being a curious sort, I blocked my own adductor canal and got a good skin block on my medial calf, which was to be expected, but not much else. Over time, we realized there was another nerve involved, the nerve to vastus medialis, which is a branch of the femoral. It runs nearby the saphenous nerve in the mid-thigh and helps supply the knee joint. In fact, a good chunk of the anterior medial capsule is innervated by these two nerves. And now we began to understand why a block at mid-thigh that got both of these nerves would provide decent pain control for knee patients. We're going to get into how to do the block, but first, there is some confusion and debate about the adductor canal nomenclature. You'll see the name femoral triangle block also used for what appears to be a very similar technique. What's the deal? Okay, so remember our adductor longus and sartorius muscles? Well, the point where the medial edge of both muscles meets is the apex of what's called the femoral triangle. Technically speaking, if you block the saphenous nerve and the nerve to vastus medialis proximal to this point, you're in the femoral triangle. If you block those nerves distal to that point, you're in the true adductor canal. So is this important? Not really. It does make for boring debates about nomenclature, and I suppose if you were a 19th century anatomist, you might have strong feelings about one or the other. As a proceduralist, here's what we know. You can put the local anesthetic in the subsartorial canal several centimeters proximal or distal to the apex of the femoral triangle and get the same effect. So distinctions are academic. We're all doing the same block. If you want to call it femoral triangle or adductor canal, that's cool. Just know that in practice, it's kind of the same thing. And really, we just want to do the block at about the midpoint between the inguinal crease and the top of the patella. If we do put our probe exactly at the apex of the femoral triangle and image the femoral artery, we'll see that the medial edges of sartorius and adductor longus meet here. Now, I don't know about you, but to me this looks a lot like a whale with the artery as the eye. Once you've seen it, you'll never not see it. You're welcome. And it's no fluke. It's a fantastic landmark to get you started. Okay, I'll stop. Anyway, if we travel north with the probe, the adductor longus muscle becomes more prominent and the sartorius muscle appears to slide laterally off the artery. You don't want to block too proximal or you'll start to get more motor fibers and end up with quads weakness. Not good. In contrast, if we slide back the other way, adductor longus disappears. Too far down and the two nerves that we're after deviate from one another and your block may not work as well. So I'll usually start at the midpoint of the thigh, verify that I'm more or less at the apex, and then move lateral and fine tune my position until I have a clear view of the plane between sartorius and vastus medialis. It's this plane that I want to target with my needle. But there's a problem. I know the saphenous nerve is here because it's always right beside the artery. Where is the nerve to vastus medialis? 
Well, we know it lies in the intermuscular plane between sartorius and vastus medialis muscle, but it's not always clear. It could be this, or this, or this. And there's worse news. The two nerves are separated by a fairly tough tissue layer called the vasto-adductor membrane. You see it glistening here. Dissection studies show that these two nerves essentially live in two separate fascial tunnels. And we can tell this clinically. When we bring a needle across in the fascial plane, there's often some resistance and then a as the needle passes through the membrane and into the perivascular space where the saphenous nerve lies. The implication is that if you want to get both nerves, you can't simply put local next to the artery because that membrane is likely to prevent spread back along that fascial plane to the NVM. Well, if we can't see the nerve all that well, but we do want to block it separately, how do we do that? Enter our old friend, the nerve stimulator. If you stimulate as a needle is advancing through the fascial plane, as you get close to the nerve, you'll suddenly evoke a motor response of the vastus medialis muscle. I keep my hand on the distal medial thigh as the trainee is advancing the needle and I'm instantly able to tell when the needle is close enough. You can appreciate by the location of the twitch that it's just the vastus medialis head. Okay, let's do this. Here we see our two muscles and the artery. The saphenous nerve will be next to the artery and the NVM somewhere in this plane, maybe here. Our needle comes from the lateral side aiming for the intermuscular plane. We initially get a local muscle twitch of sartorius, but then as we advance we evoke a true twitch of vastus medialis by stimulating the NVM. Perfect. As we inject, we see NVM getting pushed down. We'll put 10 mils here. Then we'll continue advancing, being careful to avoid NVM. We'll feel some resistance at the vasto-adductor membrane and then pop through. Injecting 10 mils in this space will block the saphenous nerve. You can tell we're right next to the artery by the vessel deformation. After the needle is removed, we can see the two nerves like two little jelly beans in two separate compartments. Moving a little up or down confirms good spread and we can really see the vasto-adductor membrane easily here, separating the two pockets. We use 20 mils of local anesthetic for this block. We'll divide that equally and use 10 mils for the nerve to vastus medialis and 10 mils for the saphenous. Here are some adductor canal tips. First, it's very useful to have a shallow trajectory and to do that, we'll enter the skin several centimeters back from the probe. If we enter close to our probe, we can enter the subsartorial plane, but then have to make a sharp angle to carry on towards the saphenous nerve. Instead, much easier to enter a few centimeters lateral where it's a straight shot to get both nerves. Second, nerve stimulation is very useful for finding NVM and ensuring that it's properly blocked, but it's also useful to protect that nerve from injury. Since we can't see it in many cases, it's possible to contact it on the way to the artery. In this cadaver experiment, we inserted block needles towards the saphenous nerve, old school style, without paying attention to NVM. Then we put wires through the needles and removed the needles. When we dissected the thigh, over half of the wires were touching or even impaling the nerve to vastus medialis. It's hard to know if that kind of trauma is clinically relevant, but we have heard of cases of isolated medial vastus atrophy after an adductor canal block, which gives me the heebie-jeebies. With nerve stimulation, I'm able to approach the nerve carefully and protect it. Third, there are times when I just want a saphenous nerve block, usually as a supplement to a sciatic nerve block for ankle surgery. In these cases, I want to deliberately avoid the NVM and I'll come out of plane just lateral to the artery to land in that compartment that contains the saphenous nerve. And finally, if you're using a catheter, make sure to place the orifices in a location where the injectate flows toward both nerves, not just one. Here's an example of a multi-orifice catheter filling up both compartments. The adductor canal block is fairly straightforward, but there are some nuances and technical factors that make a difference. When we started doing our adductor canal blocks this way, we definitely noticed our knee patients had a much more consistent and comfortable post-operative course. But that's not the end of the story. There's another simple component that we added that has lowered our pain scores even more. So to maximize your knee patient satisfaction, check out this video.